All right, so welcome to part three. If you haven't seen part one and two, you should check those out because this will um, all fit together. I'm testing in-ear, uh, professional in-ear monitors and some semi-pro and lower line stuff and comparing the actual sound of them by using some uh, measurement mics and um, playing music through it and pink noise through it, looking at the uh, spectral response as well as the transfer function and phase response for the various ears and just talking about them in general. Um, cool. All right, so uh, let's do some listening and uh, see what the contours sound like versus the um, Roxanne's and we'll also do the low frequency boosts that are in the cable um, those EQs and see what those do great so let's bring up some music now these are a little offset in volume so I'm gonna try and match them up a little bit Okay, so we heard a bunch of um, different stuff there. Um, compared the two to each other and then boosted the low end on um, one and compared the, or not boosted, the EQ'd one to the EQ'd other, EQ'd Roxanne to the EQ'd acoustics. And then I um, altered the EQ on them as we were listening to them. One more thing I wanna do is I started this video saying that I was going to compare a $38 pair to a $2,000 pair and these are up near $2,000 um, and let's go ahead and do that. So these I bought for $38 on Amazon 
and they are CCA C10 hybrids, eight armatures and two dynamic drivers. Um, they've got a kind of a, almost a fibrous, it looks brown, maybe it's plastic, it's plastic, it's just got a brown, it's actually brown, it's a plastic cable, I can tell now. And also I kept calling these braided. Some of them are braided, some of them are twisted. Uh, this is actually two sets of twisted pair. There's four wires here splitting onto um, two sets of two. The Ultimate Ears and the L Acoustics were actually the braided ones and the rest of them are twisted. And let's see what um, $38 does against, very expensive. Okay, there's the response. We've got the double peak like we saw on some other ones. And um, with a third peak up here at 12K, it's got some high frequency response and a rolling off from the low end. And then uh, let's get our timing together here. Find, insert. Um, phase response is out of polarity because I put the polarity reverse in to test the rock sands. Let's get that in line there. And there we go. Um, phase response actually looks pretty darn good. Find that. Um, there it is compared to the um, contour. And let's give this thing a listen. Okay, I've had enough of that. Um, all right, so um, in wrapping up here, um, you know, we looked at a lot of different in-ears. We looked at a lot of different responses on these in-ears. Um, there are a lot of other factors. This is not just the fact that it's flat and sounds the same as what's going in is, uh, seems very advantageous, and I believe it is. On the other hand, there are things like your internal resonance of your body and the warmth that comes from that. And at certain volume levels, if the in-ears have that peak response or if they're kind of less low end to them, um, they're maybe adding in that. So if you're singing, you're singing to yourself and also there's stage volume and you're feeling a lot of low end and you're hearing that come from the environment. So maybe you don't need that low end and those ears are tailoring it. Uh, is that something we want built into the ears or something you want to do manually through EQ? Um, also, um, the Future Sonics, um, you know, the sound signature, the sonic signature of those was vastly different. Uh, but well, the reason I actually brought those in to Chili Peppers, because the band was asking for more and more volume in their ears, and then they were upset that their ears were ringing and wanted to not have so much uh, ear ring and worried about hearing damage. So we were going through a bunch of monitor engineers and so what I did is I, the Future Sonics tended to be less loud and um, lower gain, lower output than the Ultimate Ears that they were previously on. And though they didn't sound as fidelic, that lower gain on the Sennheiser packs made it difficult for the monitor engineers to turn it up past a certain volume. And so it was right on the edge. It could get loud enough, but um, it was kind of like a built-in limiter to stop the monitor engineers from hurting the band. Um, and then once we kind of locked into some more stable engineers, they switched them out to something that they had more control over. Also with the sure packs, that doesn't work because they have enough boost to get past that. So um, there's a lot of factors in in-ears. Uh, ear fatigue over time, concerns about hearing damage, you know, the desires of the band versus the desire, you know, for during the show versus after the show. Um, and um, yeah, the, it's the, the nuances are limitless and um, hopefully these are some useful and informational 
uh, aspects that um, will help monitor engineers make a make their decisions, whatever it is. And also, if you're not, uh, if you're looking for a pair of ears that work both for in-ear monitoring and um, uh, listening to music in between, you might pick a different pair. Um, do you want to EQ it? Do you want the ears to do EQ? So there's a lot of factors. All right. Um, cool, cool. Hope you liked it all. And um, let me know. Get, send me some comments and um, let me know what you want me to test next. I got a bunch more stuff coming up.